Okay, so we have to choose a cloud provider and I will use AWS because it's super easy to get started with. And basic knowledge of cloud is necessary, but I will re-explain everything as we go. So that includes AWS EC2, AWS AMI for custom EC2 images, some networking basics like IPv4 addresses, subnets, security groups, and firewalls, some availability zones understanding, or alternatively, you can use on-premise servers, on-computer virtual machines, or any cloud provider such as Azure, Google Cloud, Rackspace, etc. But for this course, I will use AWS. So Zookeeper has a quorum architecture, and that's like three Zookeeper servers that we're going to set up in this class. Basically, I'm going to give you some high-level information about Zookeeper. It's a distributed key value store. It has some kind of voting mechanism, and it's used by many big data tool in the Hadoop ecosystem. It's absolutely necessary, as I said, to have a functional and up and running Zookeeper Quorum to run Apache Kafka. And that's why we'll spend two hours on setting up Zookeeper correctly. For this, you don't need to know anything about Zookeeper. We'll acquire all the knowledge as we go along. For the Kafka cluster setup, we'll basically collocate in this course Kafka and Zookeeper on the same machines to save a bit of money. But that's not the recommended way for production deployments. And all the knowledge we do right now is still applicable to production deployments. So what do I mean? Right now, in this course, we're going to have three availability zones and three EC2 instances, and they're going to run Zookeeper and Kafka, as we've seen. It's called co-location because Zookeeper and Kafka run on the same EC2 instance, but you could very well run them on different servers, and that's actually the recommended way for production deployments. Finally, the Kafka brokers will be connected nonetheless to any Zookeeper server on any machine. So it still works really, really well. The final setup, you already seen this, but on top of it, as I said, we're going to add some uh, UI tools such as NuVet Navigator, Kafka Manager, Kafka Topics UI, Confident Schema Registry, and the Confident REST proxy. Now, finally, I just want to make sure you understand something super important about Kafka and mostly on the cloud providers. When you do set up Kafka and Zookeeper, these processes must know their host name or IP in advance. And they're not supposed to change over time, even after a reboot. Otherwise, your setup will be broken. So having a constant host name or a constant IP is key. And you have several options. Because in the cloud, when you change, when you reboot a machine, you get some problems. So you can use an elastic IP as a constant public IP. But the problem is that your cluster will be accessible from the outside, which may be a problem. You can use a secondary ENI, like a constant private IP, and we'll do real constant private IP in this course. And then if you want, and that's the most sophisticated solution, is to use a DNS name, so private or public, and basically you remap the DNS to whatever machine you have. So in this course, we're going to visit option two, okay? But just so you know, you're aware, if you have access to option one or three, please feel free to use it after this course, okay? So that's all for uh, target architecture, cloud provider, etc., etc. I know this is a lot, but don't worry. We'll go along one step at a time and you'll figure out everything very, very quickly. See you in the next lecture.